Hello, italki teachers. Today we're going to talk about the italki classroom. I'm going to walk you through some notable functions. I'm going to tell you some tips about the italki classroom and how I use it with my students. So let's begin. And before we dive in, I just want to let you know that I do have a Patreon account where I make resources from scratch. I have some free resources on my Patreon account, and for as little as $1 USD, you can get access to dozens of other resources which I have um, provided just to share with the community. So definitely head on over and become a patron today. Thank you and keep smiling. And with that being said and done, let's get started and talk about the italki classroom. Okay, so in a nutshell, there are four functions that italki has updated their classroom with ever since I began teaching. And I want to focus on those functions particularly today because I find them for the most part useful. The first one is the add note function. The next one is the lessons function. You you also have a whiteboard function that you could use with your students. And finally, there's a prompts function. Yeah. So one thing that is important to know is that when you first go into the italki classroom, you will not actually see the chat. So what you need to do is just head on over to this icon up here and messages. Click on that right there and then you'll be able to see the chat. Um, in the chat, you have a little lesson detail column uh, where you could actually set a learning objective if you would like to for your students. Um, so you could go and edit this learning objective column right here. You could upload different resources for your lesson too. And uh, you could provide a little uh, language analysis so you could give some feedback to your students. Um, I use Google Docs instead, so I don't really have much need for this, but I think that this could definitely be useful for um, teachers who are teaching students who don't have access to Google Docs, or just for teachers who would rather keep things simple and keep everything in one place um, instead of using a plethora of different resources. Uh, so that's that right there. You could even make notes right here, but you should keep in mind that your student can't actually see your notes. So I could say something like, um, maybe I could say on Monday and correct my student who said in Monday, for example. Um, and that will not be seen by my student, but I could always screenshot this and send this to my student afterwards. Yeah. Uh, finally, you have a lessons column right here where it explains uh, the different lessons that you have taught to this student in the past. There's also a whiteboard uh, feature right here where you and your student could collaboratively draw or write if you would like to. So one way that I could use this, I could upload a picture right here, for example. Um, do, do, do. Fantastic. So I could ask my students questions like, where do you see the angry person? And maybe we could circle this one right here. Or where do you see the surprised person? Circle this one right here. I really like this right here. This is the prompts for your practice. So you have different prompts such as, how do people entertain themselves in your country? Which movies explain your country's culture and history best? So that's fantastic. You could even go to different um, categories. And I think this will be useful for teachers who don't have experience with um, lesson planning, perhaps, or even curricula design. And this will help uh, teachers as well to get some different ideas. So if you're thinking about what you could frame your first few classes on, this is it right here. So personally, I only use the italki classroom um, if my students book a lesson through the classroom. Aside from that, I'm completely fine if they want to use Zoom or use Skype. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've grown accustomed to using these ones as well, but I'm slowly incorporating functions from the italki classroom into my classes as I find them useful. One thing that I think the italki classroom has a big advantage with is with students who do not have access to Google. Since I use Google Docs, the italki classroom could be very, very useful. 
And just another quick word on the italki classroom. From my experience in my first, let's say year or 18 months on the platform, the italki classroom just did not work for me very well. Meaning that the connection for one reason or another, and I'm not a tech whiz, but for one reason or another, it did not connect that well for me. Um, however, recently I found that it functions very well for me. I don't know if it's my location or if there's another, there are other things at play, but I found that it's been working quite well. I think that one convenient thing about the italki classroom is that you don't need to add your student on Skype, you don't need to send them links to Zoom, for example. It's all right there for you right away automatically, so that could be a, a fantastic advantage. On the other end, if the classroom isn't working for one reason or another, it's always good to have a plan B. So that's it for today. That is a little tutorial on how to use the italki classroom. I hope you found that helpful. If there's anything that I'm leaving out here, please just let me know in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, also let me know in the comment section below. As always, please subscribe to the channel because it really helps the channel out. And until next time, keep smiling.